Corey, look, you got the jump on him pretty good there. Uh, second quarter, early third. It looked like maybe they turned up their intensity. Uh, Jenkins called a couple of timeouts. He seemed upset. Do you, did they did they turn up their intensity? And how do you feel like you guys responded to it? Um, yeah, I think for sure. You know, give them credit. I thought they kind of weathered the storm uh, a couple times. I thought end of the first half they weathered it a little bit, and you know we jumped on them really early in the third. Uh, and they weathered that. They got control of the game. I mean, they won that quarter by, I think, 10 or 12 points uh, after that little flurry. So give them credit. I thought they played a full 48. They hung in there. I thought we really competed tonight. I thought we played really hard, and I thought our intentions were really good. Uh, I just thought we got a little sloppy with the ball uh, and a little sloppy in transition. I thought they just got way too much, uh, you know, with numbers. When we settled into the half court and played our defense and held them to one shot, uh, it was really good, but, you know, we didn't get to that enough tonight. Here's Lawson with OKCThunder.com. Yeah, Coach, one of the, the constant themes, especially over these past few games, is that everybody that steps on the floor for you guys seems to score. Everybody that stepped on the floor tonight scored for you guys. What do you like about what you're seeing on, on that end of the floor from seeing everybody contributing on the offensive end? Yeah, I thought, you know, it wasn't as, as sexy as the Minnesota game because obviously it was zipping around. We were making shots. But I thought the intentions tonight were still really good. You know, I thought a lot of the turnovers uh, that we had were pretty well-intended turnovers. You know, we just, like, had a misread. They were more like teaching turnovers uh, and teaching plays than they were, like, poor intentions or bad energy. You know, I thought we ran off at sharp, and I thought we really tried to move it. And I thought the balanced scoring and the assisting was a reflection of that. Um, but just, uh, you know, didn't have, you know, as sharp of a game, you know, in terms of the outcomes. But I, I didn't think it was a lack of intention on our part. Nick Gallo with Thunder Broadcasting. Yeah, maybe kind of to that point, Mark, just the value that you will, will probably be able to get out of clips with Isaiah or Lou or Teo catching attacking closeouts and then driving driving into the paint and having to make decisions from there what, what do you think not just those guys but just everybody what they can learn from some of these scenarios of, of attacking getting in the lane and making choices yeah I, again i thought the the ball movement uh and the offensive execution was pretty sharp tonight uh and then i just didn't think we finished a lot of those you know i shouldn't say a lot there were just enough plays we didn't finish uh either with a missed shot or with a turnover that kind of ignited their break, but that's why transition defense is important because you're not going to make shots the way we did the other night every single night and for every stretch of the game, and that's why getting back and getting set uh, in those situations and making them uh, play against your half-court defense is critical, and I thought that's really where our lapse was tonight, and that's the biggest teaching that we can take from this. One unrelated thing, it just seems like Poku for such a young guy is is pretty in position defensively is is able to just use his length of being in the right some of the right spots more often than not what have you thought of that dynamic of just the way he's learned positioning yeah i mean he's a smart player and the two steals to start the third quarter were both you know help side steals he was in the right spot he's got great length and you know he's pretty disruptive with that um you know and i thought offensively you know he had the turnovers tonight which were loud but um, even on those plays, like where he was delivering the ball was the right play, and he just didn't get it there. And those are kind of ones that you you got to kind of stomach as he figures out the length of his defender and the timing of those plays. Uh, but he's he's really slowed down, you know, from his shooting to his, his decision-making. You know, his pace is significantly different post-All-Star break, post-G League bubble than it was in the early part of the season. So he's coming. You know, he just we're going to have to learn the lessons and – uh, continue to improve, but you know he's definitely making progress. Phil Masato with the Oklahoman. You know, Mark, what, what did you see from Al having him back out there with you guys tonight? And you know, even there, even for a stretch there in the fourth quarter, he was on the floor with Moses at the same time. What did you kind of want to see with that combination? Well, I thought you know the stretches of the game that hurt us, um, you know, were end of the third. Um, and beginning of the fourth, which didn't include that lineup, I actually thought that lineup with him and Mo and Roby was pretty good. You know, Mo was, I think, plus seven in the game. So uh, I think we were pretty good when that group was out there. I mean, what I wanted to see was what, what kind of what happened. You know, like we 
had a lot of size at the basket. Um, you know, we kind of plugged it up down there. We kind of you, we dominated the glass during that stretch, and then offensively, we really pounded it inside. You know, we were able to post it to Roby once or twice. Uh, Mo was on the glass a little bit during that stretch, and, and we kind of played you know through the paint. And you know, they bring Valanciunas off early, um, and, and we kind of did it in an area of the game where he was off, and, and they had to make a decision if they were going to try to match our size. And I think they did that in the fourth, which is usually a good sign. So. Uh, it was interesting. You know, we're, we're going to keep looking at these things, but I thought Mo played well enough that it was worth extending him tonight. Back to Barry Trammell. Uh, yeah, Mark, I know pregame you talked a little bit about the, how you handle the trade deadline. Um, but in reference to the players, do you, do you even say anything about it to them? Do you notice any, any difference in their attitude or anything a day or two before the trade deadline? There's always rumors, always possibilities of all kinds of things. No, they're great. I mean, the the rumors happen, but these guys have been unbelievable. If anything, they're like more connected, more engaged, more present. They've been outstanding, you know, this whole week. I think even the spirit tonight on the bench was unreal. Um, so they seem undeterred by it. We don't talk about it um, because we're all professionals. And, you know, part of being a professional is understanding that the trade deadline's coming. Uh, it's out of our control. We're just going to be incredibly present with one another, with the group that's here. Um, and, and we're not going to be distracted by it. And I think the players, you know, understand that. It's just part of professional basketball. They understand the business side of it. But I think this particular team, not only with the trade deadline, but with everything else, COVID protocols, changing lineups, guys in and out roster-wise, um, you know, they haven't flinched on anything, and the trade deadline has been no exception. Back to 